Hello, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you. First and foremost, hoping you all are safe and healthy along with your friends and families. This is our first session to deep dive into technical essentials. And this particular session, I wanted to keep on EDI introduction before we actually move on to the product training. As this is a pre-recorded session and not a live one, hence would request you to put any questions or doubts that you may have in the comment section below. And I will try to reply all the queries as and when time permits. Since last 14 years, I have been working on EDI and middleware technologies across different domains, uh, both at offshore and onshore roles, right? Uh, starting from development, production support, admin, and now as a B2B solution architect. The primary reason of this channel is to spread the awareness about EDI, B2B technologies and products that we have out there in the market, which as a technical folk, I have always seen there's a dearth of materials out there in the open internet. Hence, uh, as a beginner who is trying to learn this technology face a huge challenge. So I'm hoping that these sessions would at least help them in some capacity to get a hold of the basics before they actually start their project work. So before we deep dive into the primary product, IBM B2B Sterling Integrator from the next session, I would like to have this uh, session specifically on introduction to EDI. Uh, for beginners, it would be helpful, but for those who are already working on any uh, EDI product for them, it would be more of a refresher. So please bear with me. And also I would request all of you to share your views uh, or any other suggestions that you may have for our future sessions. And I will try to incorporate them for your benefit. So let's get started now. So when it comes to EDI, right? The full form of EDI is electronic data interchange, which is self-explanatory. That means you're trying to exchange some data between two entities or two companies through electronic version, right? And it is not just any kind of data that we are dealing when it comes to EDI, it is mostly dealing with business documents like purchase orders, invoices, acknowledgements, those kind of business documents that uh, uh, company A is trying to send across to company B and also receive on the vice versa. So on a nutshell, we can tell that EDI is actually a application to application transmission of business documents and definitely in a standard format that both uh, applications on either side uh, can understand, right? Uh, instead of paper documents. Before EDI, uh, when back in 1980s or 1970s, it was more of a manual uh, effort where uh, if you want to do some kind of business with your trading partners, you need to use uh, paper-based purchase orders or invoices, which involves more people and definitely time, right? So in that when people intervention is there, you tend to have more number of errors. The processing speed is slow and uh, definitely the cost is more, right? Uh, so when EDI actually came into picture sometime uh, early 1990s, uh, uh, right? Uh, it actually helped to overall reduce the cost. Uh, definitely uh, less people were needed, less human beings needed and it was almost like near to real time uh, that you are able to transact business documents uh, with your trading partner community. So that's why I tried to just depict here. If you see uh, after EDI, it is no paper, no people and almost no time, right? Now on the next slide, I just wanted to portray that when EDI came into picture, initially, there were no as such EDI applications uh, which the companies used to host within their premises to do the job for them, right? Like uh, transferring data from point A to point B. So for that, they started using VANs. VANs are nothing but a value added network, which is basically a community of trading partners connected to that network. And what you need to do as a company is you need to send your business document in electronic version to the VAN network. And VAN network takes care of the routing of the data to the trading partner community in whatever format that 
has been agreed upon, right? So that was very costly. The vans and the usage of them was very costly. So slowly, companies started moving from away from vans and started implementing their own EDI application software within their premises, right? And when we talk about any typical EDI application, it's basically is capable of two primary things, right? One is translation or mapping of the data within your premise and transferring the data using different protocols that are available and widely used like AS1, AS2, AS3, AS4, SFTP, FTP, Connect Directs, OFTP, FTPS, and it, the, the list goes on, right? So, so basically, communication and translation, these are the two typical things that any EDI application tool does. And our B2B integrator is exactly doing the same, right? Which we will talk more in detail when we deep dive in the next sessions. So there are two types of model which right now exist in the market. Uh, the first model is direct connection model where you have your B2B application and the B2B application is doing a direct transfer over the internet using some secure protocols uh, to the trading partner systems, right? That's direct connection model. The next model that we have right now is that there are certain EDI network service providers uh, who provide EDI services uh, and they charge you based on per message model. And what you need to do is, all you need to do is you actually need to just send the data over to the service provider network and they have their own routing logic and translation written as per the agreed uh, 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 format. And what they do is they do their job of translating the data into the intended uh, destination format uh, that the trading partner can understand and then transfer the data to the trading partner uh, using the agreed protocol, right? So here the responsibility, right, of uh, translation and sending the data over the trading partner lies with the EDI network service provider and not with you. All you need to do is you need to ensure that the data reaches the network service provider layer. These are typical two models that we follow uh, as of today when it comes to EDI data exchange. In the next slide, I wanted to depict a typical EDI message flow, how it happens from trading partner A uh, and trading partner B. So if you see on the left-hand side, you have trading partner A. Uh, the downstream application, let's say there is some ERP like SAP, uh, which generates some kind of IDOCs or any other internal applications that they have, okay, which generates any application file format, which is nothing but an internal file format, right? Uh, that contains your purchase order details or any other business related information uh, in its own application format. Now that data, when it comes to the EDI application, which is like, for example, for our case, it is B2B integrator. Uh, in that layer, uh, that particular application file format gets converted using some maps to the EDI document, which is a standard uh, language or a, a uh, communication method that has been agreed upon. And after the EDI document conversion, that EDI application itself is responsible to initiate a connection or a communication session with the intended trading partner B system over the internet with some secure uh, security around that, like encryptions and uh, keys, stuff like that. And sends the EDI document, a converted EDI document over to trading partner B system. On the trading partner B, it's kind of similar structure or landscape that we have where they have their own EDI application uh, system which receives the data. And then based on which trading partner it has been sent from, uh, there would be some kind of configuration on their B2B layer. Based on that, they would have also some kind of translation maps uh, which will convert the EDI document into some application uh, layout that the downstream application would understand and send it to the downstream application, right? And vice versa, if the trading partner B has to send some document over to trading partner A as a response to the initial document, uh, it, it follows the same route on the other way around. Now, 
let's talk about some of the benefits of edi right so what are the benefits reduced costs right definitely when it was paper based and more human beings were actually involved it definitely adds to the overall cost to uh, do the data exchange right between two entities so when it actually edi came into picture it was more of uh, application to application less human intervention and definitely less cost the second benefit that we received is improved data quality right so it, when paper based model was there before edi uh, people used to type in or key in all the information from the physical paper uh, received over postal uh, mails right and definitely when there is human intervention there is a chance of having some kind of error uh, uh, and that leads to uh, a bad data right uh, on either app, uh, systems so when it comes to application to application application talking to each other the data quality has significantly improved because there is very less or no human intervention involved between data exchange from one point to another point the third benefit that we have seen is shorter business cycle so when i say shorter business cycle that means that a purchase order is almost immediately sent out to the supplier from a buyer system and supplier almost maybe at the same time or within the same day uh, actually ships the purchase order after acknowledging right so so the lead time to actually receive the goods from a supplier on the buyer side has significantly reduced right so that has increased uh, uh, the productivity overall right and that's the fourth point productivity where the companies are actually uh, more involved in their day to day business rather than handling the data uh, or sending the data receiving the data and focusing on that which is more time consuming and error prone right so their productivity of focusing on the actual business has uh, has uh, is is one of the key pillar of uh, edi i would say right and definitely the last but not the least is the data security right we talk about so much of uh, security these days so many vulnerabilities and all those kind of things that we have seen like recently log4j vulnerability that we have seen uh, for almost like all java based uh, products right so data security where we talk about like encryption decryption data uh, encryption at rest uh, or at uh, transit or uh, public key uh, private key cryptographies say uh, certificates uh those kind of things that we can implement through edi applications has definitely improved the data security right now when you talk about edi standards right let's say i am talking in a language which you don't know at all would you be able to understand or interpret my whatever i am trying to say no right so for that uh definitely when it comes to an application talking to another application both has to talk the same language right and for that uh, back in uh, 1980s i would say uh ansi x12 uh and edifact these are the two primary uh, standards that evolved and came in the market ansi x12 is mostly uh, used in north america uh, and edifact is mostly used in the rest of the world like asia and european regions these are the two key uh, edi standard that we have in the market uh, which can which can serve almost all the uh, industries there is a subset of uh, standards uh, which are like vix yancom okay those are specifically used in certain specific industries so it's basically a subset of edifact and uh, we have uh, Uh, uh some standards like hipaa which is uh, uh, used mostly in uh, industry uh, uh like uh, insurance uh, swift used for uh, banking or finance tradercoms are uh, mostly used for uh, uk retail vda uh, also is one of the other key uh, uh, standard that is used in automotive uh, german automotive uh, industries rosetta net is basically based on xml and used in high tech uh, sectors and recently we have seen like when we talk about uh, apis uh, and uh, edi versus api kind of discussions that goes on we have seen a uh, significance uh, of uh, using xml or json uh, file formats which are actually a uh, 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 language that has been widely used okay, along with edi definitely edi is going to stay as the main uh, uh, standard but xml json these are kind of uh, new languages 
uh, that are being used for integrating with API based products, right? API based applications. So those are also going to flourish along with EDI. So these are key standards that we can see out there in any B2B uh, application as such. Now, this I think is kind of a quick refresher that I wanted to take you through uh, on overall EDI. And we will definitely talk down the line when we talk more about mapping, right? Uh, or file transfers, we will talk about the communication protocols uh, uh, in more deep level. And uh, the next session, okay, definitely we don't want to spend more on EDI, uh, but I want to actually go into actual product training, which is a Sterling B2B integrator. So the next session would be focused on our Sterling B2B integrator and introduction to that and the capabilities of Sterling B2B integrator. And then down the line, we will talk about uh, uh, what exactly uh, we can do with Sterling B2B integrator, how we can install, how we can do maps, business process development, and uh, administration part of it, right? So, so we will talk about more in our future sessions. Thank you for listening.